Hello world, I'm Christopher Rodriguez. I'm one of the creators of Animals in Time. And if you haven't met me yet, my sole purpose of existence is to enrich your lives with science. <laughs> now I'm not gonna go all mad sciencey on you, but I am gonna give you quick explanations of common scientific topics. A lot of science resources tend to throw out a bunch of long, complicated words and expect people to understand them. Instead, I'll be giving you the what, how, and the why you should care about all these subjects. I'll be releasing videos every week. This series will also correspond with Animals in Time Volume 1. You do not need to be using Animals in Time resources to benefit from these videos. You do not need to be using Animals in Time resources to benefit from these videos. Now if you really want to see the long list of topics I'll be covering, there's a link in the description of this video. Otherwise, let's get started. Let's start with something simple. Life. Okay, it might not be the simplest topic in science, but it's probably the most important. The first thing you notice about living things is there's a lot of them. Some scientists believe that there are almost nine million types of living things on Earth, which is much more than you or I could ever categorize. But at some point, some smart people with probably nothing better to do decided, hey, let's find a way to categorize every living thing. Ever since that hollow day, people have been trying to figure out ways to categorize every living thing or organism. This is called taxonomy, and though there are many different forms, most taxonomies include categories that get smaller and smaller and smaller. The problem was that new organisms were discovered all the time, so the taxonomies had to keep changing. Then came a guy called Carl Linnaeus, who lived right before the American Revolution. He came up with a classification system that allowed new organisms to be added as well. Each time a new organism was discovered, it could be placed in the category that was the most similar. In addition, each new organism was given a name based on the last two groups. Here, let me show you how it works. But let me use something a bit easier than life. How about Legos? Now this is a problem I'm sure most of you have had to face at some point in your life. How do you find the Lego piece you want when you want it? Now, you might just keep all your Lego bricks in big tubs or bags. But if you had a bit more time on your hands, you might try to find a way to organize them. Here, I'm going to show you how the Carl Linnaeus system works. Now let's say we start with this big pile of Legos, and we need one specific piece to finish what we're building. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is take out all the little toys and pieces of trash that aren't Legos that are going to get in our way. Next, we need to start making this pile smaller, so let's sort it into two piles. One of them can be pieces that we can actually use to build things, and another pile is for things that aren't as useful, such as wheels and minifigures and other things. Next, we can probably sort by size. We can put all the flat bricks in one pile and all the taller bricks in another. See how the pile is getting smaller each time? Now let's separate the pile into rectangular bricks and bricks that aren't rectangular. Now we can do it by color. And now we're down to our last pile of light gray bricks. We can still separate them by length, depending on how many studs they have. Finally, we have two pieces left, but only one of them is going to work. We need one that is four studs long and one stud wide. There is only one piece that fits this description, and we've got it. So there you have it. We went through that huge pile of Legos to get the exact piece we wanted. We separated the bricks by type to get Lego bricks, by use to get building bricks, by size to get flat bricks, by shape to get rectangular bricks, by color to get light gray bricks, by length to get bricks that were four studs long, 
and by width to get the one piece that was one stud wide. This is the only brick that meets all those specifications. And that's why this system works. We classified this brick by type, use, size, shape, color, length, and width. In the Carl Linnaeus system, organisms are put into seven classifications. Kingdoms, phylums or phyla, classes, orders, families, genuses or genera, and species. Each classification gets smaller and smaller, so that each species is different from all the others. Though it may seem impossible to memorize the classifications of living things, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species, it is simply a matter of learning the correct mnemonic. Repeat after me. Kings play chess on fine glass sets. Or, in the domain, kingdom phylum called his class to order so that the family genus could learn about species. Or finally, ducks keep ponds clean or frogs get sick. And that is all you need to know. Checkmate. <laughs> now in the Carl Linnaeus system, each organism is given a name based on the last two classifications, genus and species. Even this brick is called a four by one brick because it is four studs long and one stud wide. And length and width were the last two classifications, basically the genus and species. Of course, all the names in the Carl Linnaeus system are in Latin. So for you Latin students, this would be a quatuor uh, unus brick. Okay, so we know how the system works with Lego bricks at least. But how about we try it on a real organism? Hmm. How about Amber the ant? Now, the story doesn't mention what type of ant Amber really is, but let's just say that she's a Sinai silver ant or a Cataglyphus bombycina. I think I'll just call her a silver ant. This means Amber is in the kingdom Animalia, which is basically all the animals, the phylum Athropoda, which is all the small things with hard bodies and legs, the class Insecta, which is all the insects, the order Hymenoptera, which includes basically all the stinging things, the family Formicidae, which includes all the ants, the genus Cataglyphus, which includes all the desert ants, and the species Bombycina, the Sinai silver ant. Remember, the genus and species get combined for the organism's name. So Amber is a genus Cataglyphus species Bombacina. And just like that, you can categorize any living thing on Earth. Go tell your parents. Next week, we'll be talking about the different kingdoms specifically. There are five... Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Quick Snips with Chris. Remember, this is a 24 part series explaining scientific topics in a way that everyone can understand. Now, I binge YouTube just like you, and I get tired of people always asking to like and subscribe their videos, so I'm not gonna do that. Though that would be nice. Instead, if you like this video, come back next week for the next one. You know where to find me.